Today I want to start with a little bit of an exercise. Can I have these two rows and then the first three in this row please stand up real quick. <laughs> Alright, thanks. So there's 11 of you standing up right now. That's 44% of this class. Um, so what does 44% mean? Let's give some fun facts. 44% uh, of people prefer to learn about a new product through a video rather than a manual. Um, that makes sense. I think I've only read like two manuals ever. <coughs> 44% uh, of LinkedIn users are female, I bet you didn't know that. 44% um, is the grade that I got on my Cal 4 final. <laughs> That's a true statement. Um, but those are all just fun facts, you guys can go and sit down. 44% is actually a pretty serious statistic. Um, Max Rosser, in his article titled Primary and Secondary Education, states that... Um, <clears throat> sorry. Max Rosser, in his article titled Primary and secondary education states that if this was a classroom in Uganda, 11 of you that were standing up would never have finished elementary school. That's a pretty serious thing. Here in the United States, in a college classroom, it's pretty easy for us to take for granted the fact that for us, elementary school is kind of a given, right? We didn't really have to think about it, we just went. This is not the case everywhere in the world. Um, specifically in Uganda, there's a multitude of factors that hold them back from reaching their educational potential. You know, whether it be poverty, disease, or, according to Alan Chetwick, an astonishing 83% unemployment rate for fresh graduates, there doesn't really seem to be anything positive to motivate the students there to stay in school. So, when we were young, it was acceptable for us to not really pay attention to what was going on across the world. But now that we're adults, it's time for us to take a stand and make sure that everyone gets the educational opportunities that they deserve. And one way to do this is to go through organizations that offer mission trips and sponsorships. So today I'd like to talk to you about three things. First, I want to talk to you about a specific organization that does this. Um, I want to talk to you about my personal experience with Uganda and mission trips. And then I also want to talk to you about what you can do to get involved. So let's dive right in. We'll start off talking about an organization called Cove Alliance. Um, Cove Alliance was founded 10 years ago by the man you see on the screen. His name is Father Hilary Mugizangago. Um, he was born in Uganda in 1972, um, and he lived during a time of civil war and a terrible outbreak of HIV AIDS. Um, now, as a child, he roamed and slept in jungles, um, trying to find any safe space that he could away from the war. And by the time he was our age, he had already lived a more difficult life than any of us probably ever will. But this didn't break him. Um, he knew that he had a knack for speaking to people when he began uh, his priesthood training, um, and he gave sermons to hundreds of kids that had no one to care for them. Um, in his own words, <coughs> HIV AIDS has swept the generation that survived the war, leaving many of the children orphans. Um, now that's why the, most of the kids didn't have anyone to care for them. So he decided that he was going to come to the U.S., and with his grit and determination, he made it here um, to finish his priesthood education, and also to connect with people in the U.S. that he knew would help him realize his vision for Uganda. Fast forward to today, where according to the Cove website, uh, they now sponsor over 200 students. And they're just one great example of an organization that provides uh, opportunities to children. So, how do I know so much about Cove? Um, my high school partners with Cove, and so every two years, they send a group of students and teachers um, to Uganda to visit St. Jerome Cove, which is the school that was built there eight years ago by Cove Alliance. So, uh, I'm just going to show you guys a few pictures from my trip that kind of exemplify what a mission trip typically entails. So, this is the uh, campus of St. Jerome. And the first thing we did when we got there was just play and hang out with the kids. Um, just getting to know them um, and just, you know, trying to catch some of their infectious spirit. This is Cobrin. Um, we call him Kabu. He was uh, one of the younger kids on campus. He actually hadn't even started first grade yet, um, but he lived on campus because his mother was part of the staff. And he is, speaks some of the best English out of any of the kids, and he kind of is already a leader for the first graders, even though they're older than him. Um, the next thing that we did was paint and putty some of the walls. You can see me up on that ladder, putting some putty on the wall, trying to fix up some of the holes that had formed. This was the oldest building on campus, the original one that had been built. We also visited some of the neighboring areas, so um, the girl here is Ellery, I'll talk a little bit more about her later. Um, she was one of the people on the trip with me, and you can see her carrying towels and plasticware. So we just kind of brought um, basic necessity supplies to 
the families of the kids that are sponsored by Kill Alliance. Um, we also organized a field day, and you can see me kind of telling people, <laughs> explaining the activities that we were going to do. And at the end of the day, we had a race uh, where me and Matt, who was another kid that went on the trip, we raced. Uh, I ended up winning. Just <laughs> um, Perhaps the most important thing that we did while there, though, was teach lessons to the kids. So this is Mr. Cortez, he's an English teacher from my high school, and he taught a lesson about figurative language using the song Stand By Me. Um, it was really cute. At the end of the week, uh, they sang the song to us because they'd learned all the words. Um, and he also taught lessons to the teachers there, um, just kind of informing them about lesson plans in America and how we typically teach our students. So overall, this trip was so rewarding for me. Um, it gave me the chance to better lives. And at St. Jerome Cove, um, seeing a Mzungu, as they call us uh, Americans, um, is enough to keep them motivated to stay in school. Uh, they love showing off to us. Uh, so many kids ran up to me show, trying to show me their report cards. Um, they love the fact that they are smart and that they are learning. So COVE is just a local organization. Um, unfortunately, they only offer mission trips to people that live in the local area. So how can you guys get involved? Um, well, there's plenty of organizations that offer other kinds of sponsorships and trips. So let's talk about what a sponsorship typically entails. Um, I mentioned Ellery earlier in the presentation. Um, she, uh, her family sponsors a child. Um, and so I talked to her recently just to get some information about that. And she let me know that it costs about $480 per year. Um, this covers food, education, and housing for the kids. So if you think about it, that's less than $500 to support someone not only living but also learning for an entire year. Um, that's really not that much. Um, you also get to write and receive letters um, from your sponsor child. Um, Ellery says that this is one of her favorite things about having a sponsor child. Uh, it really shows her when she receives a letter how much of an effect she's having on this child's life. And finally, you get progress reports. So that just means that you're getting report cards from the schools that the kids are going to. That way, if they're struggling a little bit, you can encourage them. And if they're doing well, you can congratulate them. So I hope you guys all learned something today about how to give back. Um, Uganda and Co. are just one example of an organization that provides this opportunity to children. I also hope that my personal experience inspired you. Um, if you ever have an opportunity, please take a mission trip. Um, according to research done by a professor at Baylor University, students who participate in short-term mission trips uh, tend to have their levels of material, lower levels of materialism greater appreciation for culture, and a better understanding of missions as a lifestyle. And finally, I hope you all know how easily you can make a difference. Um, even just keeping in mind the children that are undereducated in the world is a great first step. Uh, we just have to keep the kids on our brains, and uh, the rest will come. So, um, as a kind of closing statement today, I know you all know that it's important to help the kids, but I'd like to just remind you why. Um, everyone deserves a chance. Uh, I firmly believe, <clears throat> excuse me, I firmly believe that no matter where you're from or what you look like, uh, anyone has the chance to be a genius. Um, anyone has the potential to be the next Einstein, the next Dr. King Jr., the next Steve Jobs, you never know. So if we don't provide the educational opportunities that these kids deserve, we're only depriving ourselves of geniuses around the world. And hopefully, one day, 44% will only represent my utter lack of calculus skills. <laughs>